اللهم يا من على العرش استوى يا من خلق فسوى وقدر فهدى وأعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى يا من أضحك وأبكى وأمات وأحيا وأسعد وأشقى You are listening to Huda Recordings بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد we reach to the last point in the introduction we're still in the introductions the last point in the introductions is why these sects why these innovations appear start some of them is very clear it's wrong but what the reasons behind these reasons what the reasons behind these sects to appear in the muslims world or to be adopted by some people who are muslims al muqaddimah al rabi'ah fi asbab zuhur al firaq the first reason behind these sects or these ideas to be adapted or to be invented al khalal fi manhaj at talaqi al khalal fi manhaj at talaqi because their source were not their sources were not the right source of islam they based on wrong source of islam they got their informations in the wrong source the way they prove these things or the way they practicing the religion was not based on the right sources the way they practiced the religion was not based on the right or authentic sources all the innovators all the all these sects regardless how bad it is how far it is from islam or how, how close it is from sunnah they are all jami'uhum waradu ayna wahidah murratan kaliha they all share one problem that they seek their knowledge from other sources than al kitab and the sunnah al quran and the sunnah quran and quran sunnah and then the ish the salaf al salih radiyallahu anhu they have their other sources such as they said one of their main sources is the logic logic in islam has been recognized in sunnah we don't say you cancel your mind or say sharia it is contradict with logic at all no that's not right but in islam we said also that the logic has to be based on al quran wa sunnah which it means that the light for this logic to make to the so your logic will you will be able to use it in the right way you have to be yani having your reference or your source or your based is al quran wa sunnah otherwise logic is different like your understanding different than his understanding this person's smarter than that person this person things make sense to him that person doesn't make sense to him people are different and if this door open people will the religion will not be one religion it's going to be one million trillions religions everybody does what he think is right but sharia came with rules and these rules anyone look at it he will see it will never contradict the logic it always makes sense it always make sense for the persons 
Sometimes even if you couldn't find the reasons or the wisdom behind certain rules, you still cannot find reason for you to reject it. This may be there is. It doesn't seem to be that, even if I couldn't see why it's very good. It's always like this when it comes to the Sharia rules. Those people have sources. They adopt it or they take their information or their knowledge from. The, the logic, beside the logic, the dreams. And I mean it. One of their main source was the dreams and what they see in their dreams. Also, the spiritual experience. It's one of their main source, these sects, or what they call it? Huh? Ecstasy. Yeah. Ecstasy, which is the spiritual experience. What they feel, their personal feelings. They consider this a source of Islam, to judge things right or not. Also, these people, one of their source is the human beings. They took some people as a source of knowledge, other than the Prophet And to justify this, they adopt the idea of infallibility. That they said, this person cannot be mistaken at all. Therefore, he is a source for us. We can take our knowledge from him. Like Sufism, they said, a sheikh mahfuz. The sheikh is protected. Protected from what? From doing any mistake. Protected from what? From making any wrong. Shia said, Imams ma'asum. Imams cannot do anything wrong. So is, he is the infallible. Also some of even those people who are extremism with the, some of the fuqaha, the madhahib, the madhabiyin, some of them said, this kind of extremes, this is the reason for bid'ah to start. Like some of them said that Abu Hanifa, he cannot be mistaken at all. As Shafi'i, he cannot be mistaken. Ahmad ibn Hanbal ever think that he did a mistake or met. This extremism, they said he is a person cannot be mistaken. I remember once I was giving a lecture in Rice University in Houston. And I talked about the Prophet Sallallahu way of praying. And I had an old man attending to my class. After that, he told me about some issue. It said, but we are in, in, in Abu Hanifa's madhab. We don't do what you said about this particular issue. I told him, but there is hadith very clear that the Prophet Sallallahu said that. It's sunnah. He told me, so why it's not, yani why Abu Hanifa, he didn't say that. So I told him, maybe, I said, I have a question for you. Do you think Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, knew all the ahadith? He said, no doubt. I said, what? He said, sure. All the ahadith, he knew it. All the knowledge, he knew it. Khalas, yani, did end. You know, I can't argument. And he, he really <laughs> turned me off. I can't say anything. Khalas did end. This guy believed that Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he knew everything. If he knew everything, that's khalas makes sense for him. He said, this is, this is the way bid'ah start. Or this is one of the reasons the bid'ah come, adopted. That he believes in somebody, he knows everything. He cannot be mistaken. So whatever he did, I will follow this without thinking. One of the reasons also, one of the source was the narrations of Ahlul Kitab, Christians and Jews. They took their books and the Torah and the Bible and start learning from it and start adapting things from the Christianity or Judaism. Such as you hear in the early times, some people start to have houses where people enter these houses and will never get out. Worship until they die, women or men. Where they got this from? This idea was existent in Christianity in that time. Also, 
they were exposed, some of them adopt some of the ideas which is, exist in other religions, like Buddhism, like Sufis, this group of people, Sufis, they adopt a lot from the Buddhi, Buddhi from the Buddhism. They saw, for example, how the Buddhi people, Buddhism, they trade their souls, or how they are a very spiritual people. Go to the, like yoga, stay in a place with nobody in the desert, in the forces, you know, they treat themselves hard. Some of them said, for example, uh, he doesn't, uh, he, he, he treats himself very hard. You see in Sufism, this idea was very well known. They said, if you want to behave yourself, go to a dark room, lock it, and stay there for like a couple, three, four days. No lights, no food, no uh, drinks. If you want to really to be verse, go to the desert, stay in the desert with no one, or to the forest, or to the jungle. They said, uh, they said, this Shaykh, Rahimahullah, uh, inshallah, when we talk about Sufism, you will laugh a lot. <laughs> يعني, because it's really uh, interesting. They said, this Shaykh, Rahimahullah, he never had a shower for 40 years. <laughs> you know what a Shaykh, and he stinks. <laughs> يعني, uh, you can, you know, what's that? And they praising him. Where they learn this from? They learn it from the Buddhists, the Buddhism, uh, and adopt this from India. They brought all these books to the Muslims. Also, you see their main source, these sects, they never go to the scholars. When they have doubts, they argue with each others. So, or they go to the unknown scholars or the young students of knowledge. But they do not attend to the scholars. They do not attend to the circle of knowledge. So this is one of the uh, wrong way of seeking knowledge. Wrong way of seeking knowledge. That they do not go back to the scholars. Otherwise, they will learn under the unknown people. The sheikhs, unknown. Nobody knows who they are. And also... Mainly, and this is one of the reasons for bid'ah, mainly their source in their books, in their talk, the books of history and lecture, Adam. Their main source in their books, when the author, when they seek their information, they go to the book of history. And as you know, the history book has no knowledge, has narrations, weak, uh, fabricated, right, wrong, it just collections so they do not have a way of clarify the knowledge or purify the information because faltering the information يقول شيخ الإسلام رحمه الله ولهذا تجد المعتزلة والمرجئة والرافضة من أهل البدع يفسرون القرآن برأيهم ومعقولهم وما تأولوه من اللغة ولا يعتمدون على أحاديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا الصحابة والتابعين وإمة المسلمين فلا يعتمدون على السنة ولا إجماع السلف وآثارهم وتجدهم يعتمدون على كتب ولا يعتمدون على كتب التفسير المأثورة والحديث وآثار وآثار السلف إنما يعتمدون على كتب الأدب وكتب الكلام التي وضعها رؤساؤهم أو رؤوسهم وهذه طريقة الملاحدة المجرد السبعمائة وتسعة عشر Ibn Taymiyyah said, you see the Mu'tazila, one of the sects, Murji'ah, Shia, Rafidah, all different sects of Ahl al-Bida'ah, of the innovators, when they come to explain the Qur'an, to make uh, interpretation for the Qur'an, they will use the book of history or the language. They will not go to the, the Prophet Wasallam's hadith, or the books which it has, the narrations of the Sahaba, or the successor, or the scholars. No. They will go to these books which is, has no hadith, no athar about the Prophet ﷺ companion from their own logic to explain the Qur'an or to talk about Sunnah. Also, they, so many of these sects, they said that they take their knowledge directly from Allah. You remember, start long time ago, Musaylam al-Kadhab claimed the prophecy. 
than al Muhtar al Thaqafi. He claimed that he's a prophet. He received this from God. And they are, they are following their steps. You will see that some of them who said, My heart told me that my Lord said. They used to say, You, Ahl Sunnah, us. We used to say, Al Bukhari said that we, we read the narrations. They said, No, we have shortcut. My heart, my Lord. There is no even prophet in the middle. He says, directly. Also, as I told you, they believe in some uh, infallible, that some of the sheikhs cannot be mistaken. And uh, even though to the extreme that they will make their sheikhs, their imams, higher station than the Prophet wasallam, or all of the prophets. All the prophets. طيب. Also, they have a wrong, their source is not authentic. All these points under this category. Also, they always based their informations and their beliefs on fabricated hadith and weak narrations. Their knowledge not based on authentic hadith. Even they don't know what's hadith sometimes, but most of the time there, if they use a hadith, they will use fabricated hadith. Uh, for example, some of the Sufis said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he was created from Allah, from Allah's light. So he is a light and Allah is a light, he's from Allah. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala part of Muhammad, Muhammad part of Allah. He said this hadith, and this hadith fabricated. Or some of the Sufis, they said that there is secrets in Islam. Where you got this from? They said that there is hadith. Umar said, Kuntu kazinji bayna mu rasulillahi sallam wa abi bakr. Umar claimed that he said, I was like zinji, like the a slave who just came from Africa to Arab country. He doesn't know the Arabic. He doesn't know anything. So he doesn't know anything. He just um, like servant. He said, like th this is my situation between Abu Bakr and Rasulullah when they talk about certain issues. They meant that the Prophet talked to Abu Bakr with codes, <laughs> with secrets. Umar couldn't understand it. He said, therefore, Umar wasn't able to take these secrets. Abu Bakr said these secrets to somebody else. And somebody, you know it's a secret, so you can't prove it's right or not. Who knows what this secret is. Then once somebody said, oh, and I received these secrets. They're sheikhs. So they said there is secrets. So like asrab fiddin. And... This is one of the reasons uh, uh, these kind of narrations, weak narrations and fabricated ahadith help this bid'ah to appear and to spread. Also, one of the reasons, يقول, يقول, uh, يعني, العلم, one of the reasons the, uh, under this category is also they have a wrong way of dealing their source is not based on authentic source. When they deal with the scholars, when they deal with the ahadith, they don't accept the knowledge. They always argument. They always raise and, uh, contradictions points. Whenever they want to listen or they would read the Quran and Sunnah. يقول ابن بطه العكبر, he is a great imam. اعلموا إخواني أني فكرت في السبب الذي أخرج أقواما من السنة والجماعة واضطرهم إلى البدعة والشناعة My brothers العبكري الإمام ابن بطة said My brothers I thought a lot about the reasons that make people or يعني let people leave the سنة and the جماعة and fill in بدعة and يعني, uh, evil things. Then I found the reason behind this is two reasons. فوجدت ذلك من وجهين. أحدهما البحث والتنقير وكثرة السؤال عما لا يعني ولا يضر العاقل جهله ولا ينفع المؤمن علمه. The first one to be يعني asking too much questions. 
going in too much details, digging in all the small details in argument and try to uh, not to learn as much as you want to just argument and raise point here and there and digging in in very details to the level you are un, يعني, not, not, no benefit out of it. No benefit out of it. And if you know it, it's not going to benefit you. If you don't know it, it doesn't going to harm you. And this became very obvious and sometimes, especially in the, in the second century. Questions has no sense. Like this man who asked Ali about the darknesses in the moon. Or Shabi, somebody asked him once, what's the name of the Satan's wife? <laughs> Zawjit Iblis. He said, I wasn't invited to that wedding. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't part of that wedding. So I didn't know what's her name. <laughs> so people start asking about things, has no يعني, benefit out of it. This is always make bid'ah in the end. الثاني مجالسة من لا تؤمن فتنته وتفسد القلوب صحبته. The second reason, to campaign, uh, those people who campaign, the innovators, it combine, combine a company uh, with innovators, a company with innovators, or they attend to innovators' classes or being with them. Uh, those people, if they talk them, if you took them, took them as friends, they will lead you to be mubtadi like them. One also of the reasons, as I told you, they don't go to scholars. Al Jahm ibn Safwan, one of the greatest innovators in the Muslims' history, he was in the second century of Islam. We don't hear that he is in one time attend to a circle of knowledge or to seek hadith. Laysat lahu riwayah wahid fi kutub al-sun. Wa fi zaman al-riwayah. إلا لك أيسد ذات كان الجهم على معبر ترمذ وكان رجلا كوفي الأصل فصيح اللسان لم يكن له علم ولا مجالسة لأهل العلم. الجاب صفوان was a liquid person but he never attend to the scholar circle he never learn he the one who start most of these innovations so knowledge is protection ignorance as you will see one of the reason but here one of the problem in, in, in the, the methodology of seeking knowledge or taking the, or the يعني, to have the right source of Islam that you do not ask scholars. You do not ask scholars. Or people will study under unknown people. Like in Al-Hasan al-Basri time, Al-Hasan al-Basri, great imam. There is people used to go to Wasil ibn Ata. He is an And will leave Al-Hasan al-Basri. And Wasil ibn Atta used to say, Inna al-Hasan la yuhsinu illa ma inda sirwal imra'atih. Wa amma nahin falana al-uloom al-aqliyyat. Wasil ibn Atta, yani zayma gulun al-yom bitabir akhara, dola ma shaykh hayzwa nifas. Wasil ibn Atta, he's the head of the Mu'tazila. In that time, they used to ask him, he said, Al-Hasan al-Basri, Al-Hasan al-Basri, يعني, the one his speech similar to the Prophet's speech, from يعني, his beautiful speech, Rahimahullah radiallahu anhu, great imam. Wasab al-Ata used to say, who's Al-Hasan al-Basri? He only knows these issues related to ministrations and blood and all these. This is what he is good of. But the logic, the knowledge, that's for us. Today you hear this statement a lot. Some people said, oh, these sheikhs, they only talk about halal, haram, uh, uh, salat, hayd, nifas. This is what they are good. But you know, big issues, politics, uh, this is for us. Yani. They cannot do this. It's the same thing, logic repeats itself. History repeats itself. طيب. Also, Ibn Mas'ud rahimahullah radiallahu anhu said, لا يزال الناس بخير ما أخذوا العلم من أكابرهم 
فَإِذَا أَخَذُوهُ عَنْ أَصَاغِرِهِمْ وَشِرَارِهِمْ هَلَكُونَ People will only be good if they, take, if they seek knowledge from the scholars, well-known scholars. People who will known as sheikhs, they learn this knowledge from right source. But if the people start going to people who are not uh, or do not have knowledge, solid knowledge, those people are in a great dangerous. And this is very dangerous in America. Because, you know, communities in America, for instance, anybody here can be imam. Anybody here can be an Islamic center. Anybody here can open an Islamic center. Anybody here became now sheikhs and muftis. Give fatwas. And that's a very dangerous. And people start learning. I remember once I, I, I saw something very weird in one masjid. I'm very interested in, in authoring a book about the weird things I have seen it in America. <laughs> because I had a lot. I have seen a lot. I saw a person give khutbah to Jumu'ah. But when the salat came, he finished the khutbah, he asked somebody else to lead the prayer. This is my first time to see this happen. So I asked why he didn't pray. They told me because he doesn't know how to pray. He doesn't know how to read Quran. But if you didn't know how to read Quran, how can you lead the? How can you give khutbah? No khutbah is something else. The people listening, learning. You see, this is the dangerous. If somebody start teaching, and people are asking. It's a very dangerous that you see, mashallah, we have a scholar today visiting the town. Scholars, every go, everybody. Yeah, that's happened a lot, if you agree with me or not. I see this a lot. Mashallah, we have scholars coming for three days to this town. Scholar, everybody go and sit to him. Like, this is dangerous. It's not an easy thing. Not everyone you can go and attend to his halqa to study under him. Especially in these days when the fitan is spread widely among the ummah. طيب. So this one of the source, this bid'ah start in the old days. One of the bid'ah also they said that they start talking in religion or going to people who talk in religion and they are not aware of the Arabic language. And they start talking on behalf of Islam. Like, I don't know, I, I, I have seen also in America, somebody wrote tafsir for Quran and he doesn't know how to speak Arabic. He doesn't know how to read Arabic. And he wrote tafsir al Quran. Like, how? Somebody became a head of Sharia committee and he doesn't speak Arabic. So, umufti. Like, how? If he is Arab person, his tongue is Arabic, and he did not study Arabic, we don't take from him. And if he's Arab person, not only are he, not Arab people today is, is knows the Arabic language. No, he has to study Arabic. To be in a position of fatwa, of imam, of a scholar. One of their mistakes also in dealing with their source of knowledge, that they follow the scholar's mistakes. If the scholar did a mistake, it doesn't mean you follow him. See, for example, some good people did the mistakes. You cannot follow their mistakes, such as somebody tell you, Ya Akhi, if the rulers is not a good Muslim, we should go fight him. But the Prophet ﷺ said, no, if he's a Muslim, you cannot fight him, even though if he's making sins. No, 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 no. You don't know what Ibn Zubair did. Or Balash ibn Zubair. You don't know what Sa'id ibn Jubair said. This one of the tabi'in, he fought the Khalifa. This is a mistake. You don't follow his mistake. The hadith is very clear in this matter. Ibn al-Mubarak said, Sometimes there is a man. He's a very well-known scholar. But he has some mistakes. We take him as a role model, but we don't follow his mistakes. Don't 
This is related to the source. The another reason for this bid'ah, another big title, al-khalal fil manhaj, fi manhaj istidlal. The might said, okay, we will follow the Quran and the Sunnah and the narrations which is related to Sahaba radiyallahu anhu, the Athar. But there is a big other mistakes. It called al-khalal fi manhaj istidlal. They have wrong way of dealing with the, these sources. A wrong way of dealing with the sources. Even if they got the, the correct sources, they have a wrong way of dealing with these correct sources. Of wrong way of understanding these sources. Or using these sources. It's another big mistake. For instance, they said, we will use analogy. Analogy is, is part of our religion. But how they deal with analogy, they will say, they, they will make analogy in, 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 the, in, in, in things which is unseen. Like for instance, they will say, Allah said in the Quran about himself that he has hand. They haven't seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They use analogy. Hand, we have hand, that means his hand like our hand. See? Wrong way of dealing with the Quran. Then what's the result? Two extremes. Somebody said his hand like our hand. Somebody said he has no hand. This analogy came up with two different extremes, and both of them wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his hand is belong to him. Nobody knows how it looks like. It's, it's belong to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah only knows how it looks like. Umar radiallahu anh said, this using their logic again, to understand Al-Quran and Sunnah. Based on only their logic. Umar said, be away of the, stay away from those people who using their own logic and their own opinions. Only they are the enemy of Sunnah. Innahum a'da'u sunan They couldn't, they couldn't memorize the hadith and the Sunnah. And they couldn't understand it. So they became enemy to it. And if they've been asked because they couldn't memorize the sunnah, they will answer based on their opinions. Stay away from them. قال إياكم وأصحاب الرأي فإنهم أعداء السنن أعيتهم السنن أن يحفظوها وتفلتت منهم أن يعوها وسئلوا فقالوا في الدين برأيهم. You remember the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah سبحانه وتعالى will take the knowledge from the earth. When the scholars die, there is no more knowledge will remain in the earth. Then he said in the end of the hadith, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so the people will choose some of the ignorant people to be their leaders. They will ask them, then they will answer them with their opinion. This narration al Bukhari. They will answer them with their opinion, not based on Quran and Sunnah opinions. And this is one of the way to mislead people. The second. Or, or, or this point also. Another wrong way of dealing with the Quran or Sunnah, they made false interpretation. <coughs> Ta'wil. They twist the meaning. And this is the way of the Christian and Jewish. They twist the meaning of the Torah and the Bible to meet their desires. Also, they dealt with the Quran and Sunnah like this. They said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He said, He created Adam with His hand, they said, no, it means He created Adam with His power. They twist the meaning. And this is the wrong way of dealing with the Qur'an. You cannot make false interpretation based on your desires. Three, when they use Al-Qur'an or Sunnah, they will use the verses or the ahadith which is not clear. It's called Al-Mutashabih. They use Al-Mutashabih. Not clear. The meaning is might confuse you. They love to bring this ayat. And this hadith. And when they want to make us يعني, uh, prove a point, they will only use this. 
they will not go to the clear ayah. For instance, they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He is with you. That means He is with us, that means He's everywhere. طيب. Allah said in so many ayat that He is above the throne, above the heavens. Why you don't bring this ayat? Because when He said He is with you, it doesn't mean He is contact in contact with you or attached to you. Now I said, in Arab language, you, you say, Sirtu wal qamar, wa ma'ana al qamar. You can say, I travel, and the moon was with me. Doesn't mean the moon is in your car next to you, like you see him with you going. So it, it doesn't mean at all they are attached. So Allah with us, it means, that he is with us in a sense. Yani he didn't create us and he left it us and he went to other creations. No, with us, yani watching us, seeing us. So why you go to this ayah, the word with, and you leave the word above, very clear cut. You see, this is the way of Ahlul Bid'ah. When they deal with the Quran, they don't go to the ayat or verses which is clear. They go to the mutashabih. Also, they... Always look for narrations which it makes problems. Or has a special occasions. Like for a said, the Khawarij, or the, some people said, Muslims are allowed to get as group and go and fight their leaders if they are Muslims. Based on what Ibn Zubair fought the Bani Umayyah. Do you know what happened in Ibn Zubair time? Ibn Zubair time, Ibn Zubair was the, he was the Khalifa. In fact, Ibn Zubair, he was the Khalifa. Ibn Zubair, he was the Khalifa in Mecca, Medina, in Yemen, the Arab Peninsula, in Iraq, in Egypt, in Sham, in Palestine. Even in Damascus, there is some people give him bay'ah. Only small area of Damascus remain with the Amawis. And some part of Iraq. Some cities in Iraq. So you have to, why you choose this? The Prophet ﷺ been asked. Kida. Ya Rasulullah. If these rulers or princes who are going to rule us, and they are transgressors, they are zalimin, they are following other than your way, other than your sunnah. If we see them, Ya Rasulullah, should we fight them with our swords? He said, no, if they praying. There is nothing more clear than this. No, if they are still praying. So how you leave this ahadith to this incident? Somebody bring up, said, oh, Ibn Umar, he been seen once wiping the Prophet ﷺ's member after the dua, and he put it in his face. So let's go make barakah on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grave. Subhanallah. Why you take this nation and leave the hadith which is clear and the ayat and the... طيب. Also, this is a very bad logic or analogy. Why? Because that member the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam touched. But the grave the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam today, who built it is Turkish people and people like us. Maybe religious or not religious, Allah knows. So you're not touching something the Prophet ﷺ touched. See, it is false interpretations and make bad analogy. Also, one of their ways of wrong way of dealing with the Quran or Sunnah, they take one verse and they will, lift, they will leave the other verses. One narration, but they don't look to the whole narrations. Like somebody said, okay, and Nabi ﷺ said, about the one who commit major sin, he's in hellfire. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there is no one will make intercession in the day of judgment. No intercession. Khalas, he cancelled intercession. In the other ayahs, there is another verses, other verses Allah said, nobody will make intercessions without his permission. So this ayah explained the other ayah. So this is the wrong way of dealing with Quran Sunnah and the other way, which is I mentioned to collect all the evidence, this is the way of Ahl Sunnah.
This one of the reason they are they came up with this bid'ah because look to one hadith or one ayah. The third reasons for this bid'ah to appear, argument. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as reported by Ibn Majah, and Abi Umama radiallahu anhu said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when he went, when he want to mislead people after they've been guided, if he want a nations to be misled after they've been guided, he will let them have argument. The argument will spread among them. In this case, they will destroy themselves. أعوذ بالله ما ضل قوم بعد هدى كانوا عليه إلا أوتوا الجدل أنا الله the Prophet ﷺ recite this ayah بل هم قوم خصمون they are the people who argue a lot the kuffar النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said argument in Quran كفر المراء في القرآن كفر كما عند الحكم في المستدرك fourth reasons for this bid'ah to appear ignorance الجهل First kind of ignorance, they don't know Sunnah. You notice that the people of Bid'ah, the innovators, and the head of these sects, they don't know what is his Sunnah is. For instance, Ibn Taymiyyah said, if you read the book which is written by Al-Ghazali and Abu Al-Ma'al Al-Juwaini, and they are great scholars in their groups, you will realize that they never read Sahih Al-Bukhari. And Al-Ghazali is Hujjatul Islam. And Abu Al-Ma'ali is the Imam of the Haramain. And they, could, they didn't know Sahih Al-Bukhari. They didn't read Sahih Al-Bukhari even. Uh, they didn't know Sunnah. And they are very ignorant in Sunnah. And also they didn't know the narrations of the Sahaba. They are the most, they, ne, they don't know, they never read what the Sahaba said in this subject. And this is one of the biggest issue, one of the biggest reasons those people mis misled it. They never study the Sunnah, they never study the narrations of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Shaykh al-Islam said very amazing statements, there is no time to go over it, but he said that he was amazed, he was surprised, and I'm surprised like him, I think you should all be surprised. He said, when you read in a books like Ash-Shihristani, Al-Milal Al-Nihal, those people who wrote about the history of sects, or those people who, like Ash-Shihristani, he is, belonged to a group called Al-Ash'ira, or Abu Al-Ma'ali, Al-Juwaini, Al-Ash'ira, Abu Ya'la, Ibn Al-Zaghoni, Abu Al-Husayn Al-Basri, Al-Qadi Abu Bakr, Al-Baqillani wa ghayro. Those people who read, they are big names in these sects. When you read their books, they talk. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's talk. There is nine different opinions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's talk. They said that. The Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks, he doesn't talk, what his talk is. He said, they give you nine different opinions about some group maybe... Yeah, I and mean, there are very few people who exist in the middle of, yeah, I mean, in the far east or in the far west. He will bring their statement, show how much he knows. Then Ibn Taymiyyah said, and the end, he will not mention the opinion of the Sahaba and the opinion of the Tabi'een and the truth opinion in this matter. He doesn't know it. He know about a statement been said by some persons in the middle of uh, nowhere, and he didn't know what Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and the Sahaba said about these issues. This is the habit or the nature of the people of Ahlul Bid'a. He always quote this and this person, this and this, but he doesn't know. You can see they don't quote what the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, the successors, have said. And he said, in so many times, I got them. Because I found, they said, this such and such opinion cannot be accepted. Then I proved to them that this is the opinion of their sheikhs. Like this, we are Maliki. Then I told them, this is exactly what Malik said. How come you are going against it? And he said, so many times I found them saying, whoever said that is kafir. And they claim they are Shafi'i or Hanafi. Then I told them, this is the statement of your sheikh, Abu Hanifa and Malik. 
And so many times he said, when I had dialogue with them, they said, whoever said so and so, he is kafir. Then I bring him a proof that the Prophet ﷺ said that. Ignorant, they didn't know. They didn't know. I remember once, personally, any experience, with one also who belonged to one of these sects. We had an argument about wala ubara. So he said, you cannot have wala loyalty to somebody, to love somebody and to hate him at the same time. He said, no, why? I love whatever good he has, I hate whatever bad he has. Makes sense? He said, no, impossible. I said, why? Because the person cannot be good and bad in the same time. I said, that doesn't make sense, but I told him for the sake of argument, I told him, not argument, the bad meaning, because he was my teacher actually. Anyway, so teacher by force, yeah, not by choice. He was in the college. Then we reached to that point, and I told him, "What do you think the person can have? Can have iman and kufr in the same time?" He said, "Audhu billah." Whoever said that is, I said, "Stop! Don't say it." Allah, you, you, and I remember, I was so mad. I was in the class classroom. I said, stop, Sheikh, don't say it. Because he was saying, gonna say something bad. Man said, stop. I said, Allah said that. Then Wallahi, brother, he like shut down. He like, kira. I said, Allah said in Surah Yusuf, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Allah said, most of them, they believe in Allah, but they associate other with Allah. They are mushrikeen in the same times. Allah said that those people were had to iman and shirk. Then he, khalas. He left the classroom, I remember. He closed his suitcase and he said, I'm not going to teach. And he left. Yani, because those people are ignorant of the Quran and Sunnah. And they only learned something from the sheikhs or from the books. That's it. They never tried to expose to learn about the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Also, they are ignorant in Arabic language. Ignorant of the person who doesn't know Arabic language, he will make a lot of bidak. No doubt. Because he doesn't understand the Quran and sunnah. If he put himself in position to make interpretation, to make fatawa, he cannot if he doesn't know the language of the Quran. Otherwise, he is going to make bid'ah. He's going to start making from his own opinions. Such as this brother in Canada recently, I know him, very good brother. Then all of a sudden, I heard that he making a statement. He said, uh, I don't believe in sunnah. I don't believe in predestinies anymore. Why? He said, you know what, I read Sahih al-Bukhari from A to Z, two times. And I couldn't يعني, find answers for my questions. And this brother, he doesn't speak Arabic. I said, which, يعني, you, you read what? He said, I read the translations. I said, subhanAllah, you read the translations, do you think, if you read Sahih al-Bukhari in Arabic, you understand Arabic, it's enough to make you his knowledge, a knowledgeable person. He started making doubts and he's big fitna. Now in Canada, may Allah give him hidayah. Anyway, so, al-ujmah, not understanding Arabic, cause a lot of problems. Let's give you an example, happened with one of the scholars. One of the khawarij, the khawarij said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never break his promise. Because breaking promise is something good or bad? Bad, and Allah doesn't make, do anything bad. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that whoever commits such and such sin, he will go to hellfire. So that means if you make a sin, you have to go to hellfire and cannot ever be, get away from it, otherwise Allah break his promises. He raised this point in front of one of the sheikhs. قَالَ مِنَ الْعُجْمَةِ أُتِيتِ قَالَ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِمِخْلُفْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْلِفُ الْمِيعَاتِ وَلَا يُخْلِفْ وَعْدَهِ فَقَالْ مِنَ الْعُجْمَةِ أُتِيت إِنَّ إِخْلَافَ الْوَعِيدِ بِإِخْلَافِ 
على خلاف إخلاف الوعد فإن إخلاف الوعد مذموم وإخلاف الوعيد ليس بمذموم He said because of your ignorance of Arabic language you said that why? because in Arabic language promise there is two type of promise promise of punishment and promise of rewarding if I promise to punish my kids I said if you did this I'm gonna punish you then he did it then he came and he said oh dad I'm sorry he said okay this is the last time it's not something bad okay I'll forgive you this time something good to show your mercy this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he might he, he said that you're gonna be punished for this sin but he might forgive you from his mercy this doesn't mean in any house something wrong that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did something bad as a matter of fact it's a good thing because this out of his mercy but the bad if you promise something to reward then you didn't give it like if I said I promise you if you do this job I'll give you five dollars you didn't you came now inshallah next time oh, no see everybody know this bad he said because you're ignorant of language you said breaking promise is pro is always bad that's not true there is two type of breaking promise in Arabic language if you break your promise of something you promise to reward or you promise to punish see understanding the Arabic language and the meaning of it help to save yourself from involved in these innovations and not understanding these kind of uh, issues led those people to have their groups or this firqa such as khawarij also one of the point related to the ignorance when the ignorance people start to be leadership for people or people who are muta'alimin they have no knowledge but they act as if they have knowledge or big muftis or scholars those are very dangerous when they lead any communities or any uh, group of people because basically this is the way to have bid'ah fifth reasons for this bid'ah to be appear or to be spread out following the steps of the Jewish and Christians and the other nations and the other nations when you look to a group like Shia you go to the roots it goes to the Abdullah ibn Saba he's a Jewish when you go to Al Jahmiya big group when you go to the root it go all the way to a man his name Al Jambu Safwan he took it from a man his name Al Ja'ad ibn Dirham Al Ja'ad ibn Dirham he took it from a man his name Talut Talut took it from Lubayd ibn Al A'sam who's Lubayd ibn Al A'sam he's the Jewish magician who made sihr to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam this is the root of the if you go to another the people who deny the dis, the predestiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala go to them Ghailan al Dimashq he took it up from Ma'bad al Juhani Ma'bad al Juhani he took it from a guy's name Sawsan al Baqal he is a Christian a Christian man or he took this idea from the a Christian's priest when you go to Sufism you will see this idea of uh, that a person free of mistakes taken from the Catholic taking from the idea of for example of being alone in worshiper don't touch no marriage nothing taken from Christianity when you take the Sufism the idea of that somebody receive revelation from Allah Christianity again that they claim that the companions of Isa alayhi salam they received revelation they wrote the Bible after that you know these ideas has pretty much related to other religion Buddhist also they took their, their certain the spiritual experience or spiritual uh, with the purifications to purify their souls it came all adapted from the Buddhist also you see that the philosophers the Greek logic has a lot to do with a lot of these sects and to give an ideas appear adapted from these philosophers from these philosophers also like 
the Druze Musayriya, these, these groups, the Druze and Musayriya, names of groups, he had an idea of, I don't know what they call it in English, Tanasukh al Arwah. Recreation, huh? Reincarnation. Like, they, they had this idea that this person, like a Druze, for example, and the Nusayriyin, they believe there is no day of, day of judgment. They don't believe in day of judgment. What they said? They said, if you are a wrongdoer, or a sinner, or a kafir, if you die, your soul go back to another person. But it will never go back to a person who is Durzi. No, you can be a Jewish or Christian or Sunni. They said that. Anyway, also one of the things يعني, was a big reason for these six to appear, the translations. They translate a lot of the Greek logics, or these the books written by the philosophers, the Roman philosophers. It's been translated to Arabic. And the first one who started this, uh, Khalifa, or Amir, his name Khalid, the son of Yazid, the son of Muawiyah, and this is one 136. But in the second century of Islam, there is a lot of translators. But I want you to listen carefully to these names. For those who translate these books, Georges, Ibn Israel, Al-Tabib, and Yohanna, and Yohanna again, Fosta Ibn Luqa, Luke. Thabit ibn Qurra. Most of the translators are Christians who translate these books to the Muslims. They are Arab Christians. They start translating from Romans or from Greek, Latin to the, the Romans books, the Latin or the Greek to the Arabic. And it's been adopted. And maybe the only good things, those Mongolians, the Tatar, when they attacked the Muslims, the only good thing they did, that they destroyed all these books. Most of them. But and it was too late because it already spread out. طيب. In the 4th century, they became more and more. And Al-Baramika, they are where exist in the time of Harun al-Rashid, before Harun al-Rashid. They translate the books of the, the, the Hunud, the Indian, and the, the Virgin, the people who used the, the Zaradishts, the people who used to worship fires. They translate their book to Arabic. And this is... a affect a lot of groups also. Al Ma'mun was very famous as a supporter of this idea and he spent a lot of money that he built a big place for translator like a public a library. It's called Darul Hikmah, the wisdom or the, the place of wisdom or the library of wisdom. Six reasons for these uh, innovators or innovations to spread and start or for people to adapt or to say such things following the desires and ish and uh, being with the innovators. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said three things destroyed people. The first one he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hawa muttaba' to follow your desire. Destroyed the people. And as you heard Ibn Battah al-Ubkuri he said uh, following your desires and being with the people of, of who are the people of desires, it will take you away from the way of sunnah. And sometimes following the desires come in another way that it's a nature of people, they love uh, to follow their desires. There is therefore so many of these sects, they came to tell people, you don't need to do this, you don't need to do that. يعني, and the extremist group, the Bataniya, those people said, there is a hidden meaning for every ayah. Just to tell you something, those people in some day, they reach to the extent they take over so many Muslims countries. Egypt, Libya, uh, Tunisians, Algeria, Morocco, Iraq, Bahrain. It's been under their control for a such time. Man. To the extent this group of people, they attacked Mecca. They attacked Mecca, and this was in the 7th century, around 7th century. And they killed the Hujjaj. They throw in the well of Zamzam more than 500 bodies. And then the bodies comes out. And they said months, the water of Zamzam, the taste of it was not good because of these bloods. And they took off the black stone. 
to the east side of the Arabian Peninsula in that time. And the guy who took it, his name, he was killing the people and saying, Ana billahi wa billahi ana. I am by Allah and Allah by me. Or beside me and I'm beside him. He said, Allah created the creation and I kill his creation. And he executed more than 5,000 persons in the Hajj, in the Kaaba in that day. And they took the black stone to their village in the eastern side of Peninsula, Arab Arabia Peninsula for 21 years. Mecca doesn't have the black stone. Al-Qaramid, al his name. 21 years. This Hajar, the black stone, remained on their village. And do you know what? Muslim did not take it back by force. After yeah, any argument and to, they, these people spread widely and they were very strong. As I told you, one of the reasons for these innovations to spread that they follow the desires and they open wide gate for the desires. They came to tell people you can do whatever you want. If you do that small amount of things, then whatever you want to do, just do it. And people love that. One of the most extremist group, this group that I just mentioned, al uh, this group, al qaramita they were, they open the gate of Muharramat. They said, it's you can do whatever you want from Haram if you believe in certain names and you believe in them and you accepted them to be your like savior or something and to, to believe in the imam at that time and that's it everything is halal everything is halal to the extent one of them said yeah, and he's selling to this girl take the uh, drums and start yeah, and singing and be happy. Tawalla Nabiyu Bani Hashim. Waja Nabiyu Bani Yarubi. The time of the Prophet, which is from Quraysh, finished. He means, who is the Prophet from Quraysh? Muhammad. Muhammad. And this is the time of the Prophet from a tribe called Ya'rub, which is their leaders. Ahalla al Banata Ma'al Ummahat. ومن فضله زاد حل الصبي. He said this new prophet, he allowed the persons to sleep with his daughters and with his mother, and from his generosity said boys also. ومن فضله زاد حل الصبي. لكل نبي مضى شرعة وهذه شرعة هذا النبي. Why not? Every prophet has sharia. Ah. And this is the sharia ah of this new prophet. فَقَدْ حَطَّ عَنَّا فُرُوضَ الصَّلَاةِ وَحَطَّ الصِّيَامَ وَلَمْ يُتْعِبِ He said, this prophet said, you don't need to pray, you don't need to fast. He's very gentle. He said, you don't need to get tired at all. إِذَا النَّاسَ صَلُّوا فَلَا تَنْهَضِي وَإِنْ صُومُوا فَكُلِي وَشْرَبِي If you see people start praying, don't worry, just sit down, take it easy. You know, if they start fasting, eat and drink. He said, don't stop yourself from being with these bachelors who want you. These bachelors who want you. If they are relatives or they are not relatives, doesn't matter. فمن أين حللت للأبعدين وحر وصرت محرمة للأبي. How come you are not allowed? How you are allowed to marry or to sleep or to marry somebody who is not related to you and your own father he cannot have you. أليس الغراس لمن أسسه وسقاه في الزمن المجدب. He said, when you have a tree, and you start the tree, you put the seed in the, in the field, and this seed, this seed grow up, became a tree. The one who grows this tree, he's the one who should take the fruits. And this is the father. He's the one who put the seeds, and you became after that. So he's the one who have more rights 
to have you. وما الخمر إلا كما السماء حلال فقدست من مذهبي. والله فعميد من مذهبي. He said فما الخمر إلا كما السماء خمر alcohol there's no difference between خمر alcohol and water. They are all from Allah. He said all of them halal, pure. Then he said, فَقُدِّسْتَ مِنْ مَذْهَبِ What is such, يعني good religion. Or good religion. See, this kind of statement, the sick people will love to have this kind of, of life. When you see the Duruz, one of the groups, they said, يعني you will not be accountable for anything you do until you reach the age of 40. I should be 39 now, take your chance. Yani do whatever you want. The angel will not write anything until you reach 40 years. These ideas can be accepted from people, and they can bring any proof for that, and that's it. People love the desires. So they use this to spread or to justify themselves, their desire, following their desires, to say it's halal. And these people, this group who said this poet, there is terrible things in their beliefs. SubhanAllah. How it became yani, so popular in certain times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows how this happened. Also, in another hand, one of the reasons, number eight, another extreme, which is that the people will be running behind this worldly line. They will love the dunya. And for the sake of the dunya, this may be part of that, and yani very much related to that, to that desire. For the sake of the dunya, they will do anything to get the dunya. This can be any yani part. Can, we, we don't put it eight. Just keep it as part of the, the one before it. Therefore, some of these opinions came up to get a positions in the eyes of the rulers. They said there's a madhab in the second generation, since second century, saying that we give we believe that the rulers has the right to do anything. He never does mistakes. Whatever the rulers, the ruler did, it is by the name of God. To the extent they said once, Al-Hajjaj said, Who is better, your messengers or your vice president, if you are president? Your vice president better or your messenger better? better? So for sure your vice president. And they said the Khalifa is like he represents Allah in the earth. So he's better than his messenger. A'udhu Billah. And some of the scholars said, when he said that, Sa'id ibn Jubayr said he is kafir, therefore he fought him. Because he believed he is kafir, and he made takfir to him. Anyway, so running behind the dunya, let the people start their bidah. Like what they did with Uthman radiallahu an, because of the money. Because of the money, they start all these fitan. One, the number eight, now we put it. Number eight, the fitan. Fitna, whenever there is fitna. Fitna means when there is fight. When there's big fitna, when there is, when there is time, people cannot differentiate between the good and the bad, the right and the wrong. When this happened, the, the bid'ah start, the innovators, the sects appear. Like what happened in the Sahaba times, when the fitna between the Sahaba, the fight. You have the Shia, you have the Khawarij, you have Qadariya. So many groups or sects start. Because in the time of Fitan, the Muslim should step back and stay away. And not to adopt any ideas until he stick to what he knows. And not to involve in these Fitan, he will lead, he will lead the ulama to deal with it. Number nine, extremism. One of the reasons for those people to make these bid'ah or to start these bid'ah or these sects to be appeal. You remember when Musaylam al-Kadhab, the one who claimed prophecy, it helped. Musaylam al-Kadhab, this liars who claimed prophecy in the Prophet ﷺ time, they asked one of his followers. Yeah, it, it was very clear that he's a liar. Yeah, and one of the things, he's, he used to ask what Muhammad does to prove his prophecy. He said, for example, Muhammad, when he make wudu and they put the remain of his wudu in a well, the water will increase. So okay, will do the same. He will do it, then he will put it in a well full of water, the water will fa- vanish. <laughs> he will, for example, he will he do the things, the opposite happened. So it was clear that he's a liar. But one of his followers said, how come you follow him? And you're smart, yani. 
قال لكذاب ربيع خير من صادق مبر liar from our tribe better than prophet from their tribes see the extremism for their tribes or for their nationalism this is one of the reasons for so many people also to start this bidah to start this bidah extremism love to someone like to ali radiyallahu anhu or to the al bayt the prophet sallam family may people make them gods loving ali so much to the extent this he doesn't mean if you love him so much he has to be the khalifa before abu bakr and umar and uthman to insult others that's what start so many bid'ah also nawasib they love muawiyah so much so they start cursing ali this is another extreme sufism how they dealt with their sheikhs or those people who are extremism and following the madahib they said imam cannot be mistaken and this is come from the christian and jewish who take their rabbis and their monks and their priests or are like gods whatever they said it has to be followed and some of the extreme the extreme way of dealing with the religion is to be very strict very very strict in the religion and to make everything complicated and hard the religion the nature with its ease this religion prophet sallam he said my religion is ease yusr it's not complicated some people like to make things hard difficult complicated not simple this complicated make bid'ah this complicated raise a lot of bid'ah and make a lot of this sect yani for example one time ali radiyallahu anhu saw a man see how people were very extreme in, in that kufa especially he told them are you from khuras are you from khurasan he said no he said you are from faris faris is iran khurasan farther north he said okay you're from khurasan he seems like from that area he said no he said where from he said i'm earth i belong to earth i'm from the earth we know coming from the moon <laughs> it just make it difficult قال انت من خراسان قال لا قال انت من من فارس قال لا قال من انا قال انا من الارض فقال علي رضي الله عنه يعني هذا هو التشدد والتنطع في الدين and like a person he ask him كم سنك سنك how many يعني how old are you but in arabic language sin it means teeth and it means ear years old how 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 yani how years in the hold are you so that person he know that when he said this word how old are you he said kam sin qat 32 32 qal min man ant he he start making complicated uh, i came from water and i yani he start make things answers then he said okay what is the and what you want me to say he said you sh- yeah he said so how many years yani how old are you he said i don't know he said why he said because allah only knows my age he said okay how many uh, uh, sin you have how many years yani you have he said 32 this is teeth he keep us they said okay what you want me to say he said you have to ask me how many years gone from my age you see very complex qal qal al dhahabi rahimahullah qal fata'asan li hadha al mutanatta' yani qal yajib an taqul kam mada min umrik anyway so things make things complicated it one of the reasons for this bid'ah to appear the 10th the last one i will mention today the 10th that there is a lot of people have envy toward islam the enemy of islam they have a big role also for supporting these sects and helping it in egypt there is a report when the british used to occupy egypt please proceed to next cd